So I go grab my 45 again, grab my flashlight, and I go out back. It's still pitch black, so I still can't see anything. So I'm walking, I'm walking, and I'm, you know, I'm a little scared my damn self. I'm a little... Make sure I don't hear no footsteps or nothing. Every time I turn, I'll make sure, you know, I'm listening. Got to the front of the house, and I seen the dog. But the dog seen me. I heard a couple growls. He started taking like three or four steps back toward the road. The only reason he didn't cross the street is because I didn't let him. Um, but I went and put like three or four more shots. So I left and went over there to their house. I laid on the horn, you guys, for like, I was out there blowing the horn for about 10 minutes. They peeping out the door. And I, I could see the iPhone. I could see that they had a phone in their hand as they're peeping through the window. Yeah, I got to thinking. I was like, if he, if they're sitting there with the phone, they're probably calling the police. Went ahead and left. I get like two minutes down the road. By now, I'm thinking, you know, it's all gone. It's dead and gone. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, I'm about to go on to work. I could tell that there was a cop heading that way by the damn head. I could see here like, we meet at the stop sign, and he gone, he, he drives past me, and, and as soon as he passes me, he matches his brakes. So I go over there. So keep in mind, this is all before I, you know, supposedly heading to work. So if I would have just left after that altercation in the front yard, I probably would have made it to work on time. But I, I did. So I left and went over there to their house. Like I said, it was, it was across the street, two houses down. Pull in the yard, and I never get out the truck. I never get out of my truck. I pull in the yard and I toot the horn. Bum, bum, bum. All the lights on in the house. Both cars, and they got, I think they got three vehicles at the house, if I'm not mistaken. The two of them were at the, at, at the house. So I know, I was assuming there was an adult there. I mean, I noticed they had a camera on their porch. Um, I had never been down there and, you know, close enough to their porch to see anything up there. But I knew I wasn't getting out of my truck because if I would have got out to knock on the door and your dog's still loose and he bite me and I'm in your yard, <laughs> that's on me. So I won't, I won't take in that chance, you know. I'm a, I'm a thinking man, I think ahead of time. Like I think like three or four stoplights down the road. Um, and that's a saying I use if y'all don't understand. But yeah, so I'm in the truck, blow the horn, bop, bop. Nobody comes to the door. So I finally see somebody in the house. Cause like I said, all the lights are on. I see somebody walk by, by the door, two or three times. I'm like, okay, maybe they're getting dressed or throwing some shoes on or you know, just wanting to see who it is before they open the door. They never open the door. Never open the door. So after they walk by like two or three times, like I said, I'm getting impatient. You're making me late for work. I'm, I'm getting ill. So I'm still, I'm talking to myself as I'm blowing the horn. I, I laid on the horn, you guys, for like, I was out there blowing the horn for about 10 minutes. And I blew the horn about seven or eight times. I didn't care it was that early in the morning. Um, your dog don't need to be loose. I mean, the lights were on, so somebody was up. It ain't like I was, you know pulling up to a completely pitch black house and open, waking somebody up. You get what I'm saying? I had finally see, pull, I mean, beside their door, they have two two windows, two little small windows about, about that wide on each side of the door. And they were covered by um, like veils, like little, little shades or whatever. I could see them peeping through the veil. I'm blowing the horn, doo doo, boo, boo, boo. I'm laying on the horn, guys. It ain't just no little friendly, da da. It ain't no little. I'm laying on the horn. It's early in the morning. I ain't give a fuck. Bah, bah, bah. They peeping out there, and I, I can see the iPhone. I can see that they had a phone in their hand as they're peeping through the window. I'm like, yo, I'm I'm in the truck, window down, I'm waving like, yo, I see y'all. I'm waving at them and everything. Never open the door. So now I'm really mad. Your daughter came in my yard, your daughter attacked my dog, tried to come attack me, and now y'all scared to open the door? So what do I do? I start yelling. I go to yelling y'all, and I only reason I did it because I wanted them to know what I had to tell them. I mean, it's kids out here, your dog's loose, he's obviously scared. A scared dog is going to, he's going to retaliate, or he's going to attack whatever it is he's scared of nine times out of ten. So I just go to yell. I'm like, yo, this is what I told them word for word, guys. And I was just as clear as day. I think I said it, you know, three or four times to make sure they heard me. I was like, yo, if y'all don't want to bury that dog, y'all better keep that motherfucker out of my yard. That's exactly what I told them. 
I don't, like I said, I don't know if it was a kid scared to open the door. I don't know if it was a female or the wife or I don't know who it was. I didn't care at that time. So I'm th then I got to thinking, I'm like, okay, if they're sitting at the veil with the, the I, see a, I see their iPhone in the hand, I'm looking right at them like they're peeping like, who do you think you, you think you invisible? You don't think I can see you? I'm like, yo, just come to the door. All I was going to do is was just tell them your dog's loose. Can you please tie them up and keep them tied up? I mean, this kid, I was going to tell them, let them know what happened and let them know that, you know, if it happens again, you, you're going to be burying your dog. Just as simple as that. It, it might sound mean, harsh, but this is, this, that was, that was their fair warning. If your dog come in my yard again, you will be digging a hole for him. So, um, cause this was like, this is like the third altercation I've had with dogs. And I, I might do it, if this video do good and y'all like this video, I might do a story time about that one. But this was the third altercation. So, what happened next? Okay, so yeah, I got to thinking, I was like, if he, if they're sitting there with the phone, they're probably calling the police. Like, they done heard probably, you know, a total of about 10 gunshots go off, and now somebody's in their yard blowing a horn, and they're scared to open the door. Of course they're probably calling the police. I was like, man, I'm gonna just go and leave, go ahead to work. Um, and I'll just come back after work and, you know, come talk to an adult, you know, man or man, whether that be the husband or the wife, whoever stays there, whoever. I just had to let somebody know I was going to give him a fair warning because if the dog comes in my yard again to this day right now, if that dog come in my yard, they going to be putting them in a trash bag and putting them in, in the ground. Um, so, yeah, I um, went ahead and left. I get like two minutes down the road and I'm pulling up to a stop sign. All right. And by now, I'm thinking, you know, it's all gone. It's dead and gone. I mean, I'm thinking, you know, I'm about to go on to work. <sighs> As I pull up to the stop sign, it's a hill. So you can't see what's coming on the other side. I could tell that there was a cop heading that way by the damn head. I could see headlights flickering, but I could not see blue lights. So we pull up to the stop sign, and he turns his headlights, not his headlights, he turns his, his blue lights off. Um, I'm, I, I assume because he didn't want to spook me in case I was just, you know, an ordinary citizen or somebody, you know, just going down the road. We meet at the stop sign and he go, he, he drives past me and, and as soon as he passes me, you know, I'm looking because I already know he's going, you know, for the altercation that just happened with me. He matches his brakes. <sighs> he was coming to get me and I did not want to look guilty in a situation where I knew from, a, from the jump that I was not guilty. So I went ahead and pulled over, put my shit in, in part. I turned the truck off. I turned all my um, interior lights on because I know, um, or I know, I knew he had got a call, you know, and when he got the call, I know he was told that there were gunshots or, you know, shots were fired. I don't know if y'all just heard that. It's done and they're talking right loud. So yeah, I, I immediately do, I take all the necessary precautions, you know, to not get shot in the ass. I was not trying to be the next brother on the 6 o'clock news being gunned down. Just as simple as that. I had my camera with me, my the camera I'm recording with now, I had it with me, but it was in the camera bag. I would not want to be in that situation. I would not want to be fumbling, trying to get my camera out my bag as he's, you know, turning around, pulling up behind me or either walking to the truck. Didn't want to be moving, didn't want to be doing nothing. So I just was like, I'll just, you know, try my phone. If it, you know, if there's no memory, okay, fuck it. But if, you know, I knew, I just knew for a fact I wasn't grabbing that camera. So he, he pulled up behind me and he didn't turn his lights on until he came to a complete stop behind me. He turned all the way around, did a U-turn or a three-point turn, came up behind me. Then once he got still, he turned his blue lights on. So, yeah, I turned all my lights on. Roll my window down, turn, turn the radio down, turn my truck off. Like I said, I was taking all the necessary precautions to not get five or six shot shells in my ass. Even I even noticed when he got out the car, I put both my hands on the on the window so he can see. I'm, I, mm -mm, not me. I'm trying not, no, fuck that. Too many of us are being gunned down for nothing. I was not going to be the next one. Put my hands on the damn, you know, window so that he could see him. And I stuck my head out and I told the officer good morning. The only reason I did this, and I didn't, I mean, I've never told the officer good morning, good day, good afternoon or nothing. But I knew for a fact that he had got a call, shots fired. So I knew he was going to be a little on edge, a little, you know, I didn't want that fear to turn into aggression. Point blank, period. So told him good morning. You know, he came up and he was like, um, you know, what's going on? 
I forgot what his, his exact response was, but I went ahead and told him, I was like, I already knew what you was turning around for, you know, that's why I went ahead and pulled over. He was like, so what's going on? I told him what happened, you know, the dog came in my yard, I had to fire some shots in the air to get him off. I went in the front yard, I called my, told him about the neighbor, I called my neighbor because I assumed it was one of his pit bulls. He called me back, said, I tell you, all my dogs locked up. I walked outside with my flashlight and my gun. The dog approached me again. I had to fire more shots in the air, which I should have put the dog down, but I don't. Like I said, this is the third altercation. My dad told me I should have put those first two down, especially the first one. If I tell you ever do a story time about that first one, y'all would really probably agree with me that the dog should have been put down. I tell him that I go to the, you know, the person's house, whose it is, and I tell him I blow the horn for about three or four minutes, which it was really longer. It was about 10 minutes, like I told y'all. And, um, I told him just as clear as day. I, I cussed, I cursed at the cop and everything, guys. And I mean, I, I was just heated at the moment. I told him that could have been my girlfriend, my wife outside. That could have been anybody's kid. That could have been me. It don't matter. Like, the dog is loose out of his yard. It's obviously spooked. And if he come in my yard again, you can let him know that they'll be burying the dog. So I'm already late for work. So he, he asked for my ID, you know, after I told him my story. And, you know, he... I, he he goes he leaves to go back to his patrol car and I you know stick my head out the window I'm like hey excuse me officer can we kind of keep this speedy I'm already late for work if I was already like 15 20 minutes late for work then so he's like yeah I'll just get your information and I'll send you on on your way so pretty much that's what he did um it took him about three no it took him about five minutes I don't know what he went and checked I guess he checked you know warrants you know do I own a handgun I don't know I don't care what he checked I knew he couldn't do nothing to me I knew for a fact everything that I did was legal and you know right by how I handled you know what happened he come back give me my license and um you know he sends me on my way Oh man, this shit's so fucking stupid, man. Make me late to work over your dumbass dog. Yes, sir. All right, appreciate it. No problem. Hey, are you going to their house now? Yes, sir. Let them know what I said now, because I, I will go go back this afternoon. Let them know. Keep that fucking dog out of my yard. I'm not playing. Right. Appreciate it. It's gonna happen multiple times. Like the video if you liked it, comment, let me know what your thoughts on it, you know, and definitely subscribe guys. You subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I can't emphasize that enough, you know. We're finally starting to see our subscriber count grow on a daily. That's what we want to see. If we can average one or two a day, that's that's good. That's good. That means we're progressing as long as we're not standing still. And we're gonna be continue to bring you guys new content, new pranks, new challenges, new story times. Uh we'll be bringing you guys the uh no thumbs challenge soon. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. And before I forget, I was going to do it at the beginning of this video, but I forgot. I want to give a special shout out to a good friend of mine. We met at, if I'm not mistaken, we met at the first college I went to. Before I went to ECU, I went to a community college. And I believe that's where we met. Justin Reinhardt. Big shout out to him, man. I might, you know, flash this picture on the screen or something somewhere. Justin Reinhardt was the only one to comment in the last video I did, the prank uh, that I pulled on the code that caught texting another girl prank. Uh, I posted in the description or the comments, I was like, whoever can answer this question correctly, I'll give them a, a shout out in my next video. I asked them, you know, how many times did she ask, who is Ryan? Because that's what, if you haven't seen the video, go check it out. It's down somewhere on the channel. Go check it out. Uh, 
that and all our other content. Go check it all out. Like, comment, subscribe, and be sure to come check us out, man. Be be sure to come check us out. Like I said, we're planning on you know picking up the pace here. Now that we're um we're you know we're getting the hang of things, we're gonna try to pick up the pace and bring you guys continuous material. All right, guys, I'm gonna get on out of here because I'm getting a little hot with these lights beaming on me. And as always, much love and many blessings, people. Peace.